Hello and welcome to Speedtrap Consulting's introduction of the GT3584R ball bearing reaper turbocharger. This turbocharger has been out for about uh, three years and has done some fantastic things for us. Uh, what I want to do as usual is go through our five points, which is engine size application, purpose, power level and characteristics, composition, and specifications. For engine size application, uh, this is mainly for a 1.8 to 4 liter uh, application and uh, for four, six, or eight cylinder engines, as well as two rotor engines to make it upwards of about 730 to 740 horsepower. This could also be anywhere from a 2.5 to 4 liter and up V8 applications that want to use a twin turbo set and that will make about 1200 to 1400 wheel horsepower. Uh, really the purpose for this turbocharger is to create the ultimate time attack turbo for those in a 1.8 to 2.4 liter class that wants to use this uh, in upwards of about 550 wheel horsepower. Uh, they don't mind the use of water lines, high bruise pressures, high thrust loads, and you know, uh, that are going to go over 30 pounds of boost pressure for this because this really is a high endurance, uh, highly durable uh, turbocharger. Uh, it also can be used for a lot of road racing applications from anywhere from 500 to 650 wheel horsepower. And although most drag racers may shy away from this, uh, it can still be used for drag racing applications in upwards of about 700 wheel horsepower. Um, but you want to make sure that uh, you as a customer understand that unlike uh, the journal bearing reaper uh, that this was based off of, uh, the use of water lines is a requirement and not uh, much one of an option. Well, let's look at the power level and characteristics. Uh, a lot of the power and characteristics are very similar uh, to that of the journal bearing reaper turbocharger, except this is much more highly durable uh, in terms of uh, being able to withstand a bit more heat. The tolerances are a little bit tighter on the cartridge. Everything you would expect uh, from the GT35R because that's where this turbo is based from. Uh, but what we did do um, for 2012 and 2013 uh, from the journal bearing reaper with this new ball bearing one is that we noticed that a lot of the users now uh, because of the fact that they are into uh, high endurance racing and a lot more high heat transfer and high rotational speeds is they wanted something that had better transient response. You've got smaller displacement engines that want to run more boost, 30, 35 pounds or more, and they are very high RPM based. And so we wanted to be able to, to uh, readjust some things in which uh, that transient response in between gears, they could still become in within their effective range uh, and still be able to have a, a smooth transition uh, in between those gears and make high power. So what we did was, you can see here, we changed the angle inlet, we readjusted it uh, so that there was a bit more uh, lead uh, splitter blade of the inducer to go over the secondary blade a little bit more so that we're looking at a little bit of a higher rotational speed as opposed to um, the previous generation. So what that means is that there's a smoother transition uh, of the air entering the inlet and that's being converted into uh, pressurized air as it goes into the intercooler here. Okay, So this level of effectiveness is going to be created for those vehicles, as we stated, that really want to be able to have higher thrust loads that are higher RPM based and still want to be able to have durability and reliability. So the effective pressure ratio for this turbocharger, in essence, is going to be from 18 to 34 pounds of boost pressure. So that's about 2.0 to 3.4 PR if you look at it from a compressor map point of view here. Okay. So this is a great way of being able to run a bit higher boost pressure and still between be in its effective range uh, and still be usable and reliable. Okay, Let's look at the composition of this. Uh, like the General Bearing Reaper, this is a full Garrett product uh, with the exception of the uh, compressor wheel. So um, we're using all Garrett components here because this is based off of uh, the GT35R. Okay. So uh, what we're using here is a T6 7075 uh, forged aluminum uh, for the compressor wheel. And we're using, of course, the Garrett all-encompassing, all-efficient uh, 68 millimeter turbine wheel, the N111 turbine wheel. Okay, uh, This uses the um, water fittings, uh, 14 millimeter uh, to dash 6, which is most recommended for it. 
and this also uses in this particular example here uh, this is the feed fitting right here which is 1 8 NPT uh, especially for those in uh, uh, using a small cylinder, uh, low cylinder application like a four or six cylinder, uh, you're probably going to need the 30 thousandths restrictor in addition to what's already in here. So a 30 thousandths restrictor, one eighth NPT is going to be necessary as well, just like with the GT35R. Uh, the one thing about that is uh, that we like about it is the fact that this has uh, a great uh, anti surge cover, just like with the 35R and a GTX35R. Um, as well as the inducer bleed groove and the ported shroud to be able to take those those high thrust loads, those highest rotational speeds. Let's look at specifications. As I said, you're looking at here, this is a 61.8 millimeter inducer, 84 millimeter exducer extended tip using T6 7075 grade aluminum to prevent any flex at these high rotational speeds. Uses the N111 uh, uh, turbine wheel uh, for that, and what happens is you now have a choice with that ten. With the, unlike the journal bearing, just like with the TG35R, you have some options. You can do a example like this one, which is a T3 inlet, okay, with a three-inch V-band. Uh, you can switch it out to a tile turbine housing. You'd be able to use a standard uh, T31 2.5-inch four-bolt outlet. Uh, and you can choose either 0.63 AR, 0.82 AR, uh, or even a T4 and a 1.06 AR, or divided housings. There, there are lots of options to be able to use this, unlike the, the journal bearing ones. Same as you would with the Garrett GT X series and GT series um, 35R, you know, series turbocharger. Uh, standard for this particular turbo, though, like I said, we use T3 inlet, 63R. Uh, 63 AR outlet, which is good to about 650 wheel horsepower. So, so, but unlike the um, journal bearing version, we don't get to change uh, turbine wheels. With the journal bearing version, you're able to use a turbine wheel uh, that's either going to be a 71 millimeter or 74 millimeter. Lastly, this uses a 0.70 AR TO4S compressor cover with uh, a 2.5 inch outlet. I really like this turbo. I think it's one of the best um, that we've ever used, uh, especially for high endurance racing, time attack, HPDE events. I think it's one of those kinds of turbochargers where once you buy this, you really don't want to buy anything else. And uh, especially for those that want to be able to reach that 550, 600 wheel horsepower and is not afraid to run pressure to be able to do so. Um, because uh, just like with uh, the GT35R series, it's not rebuildable, but once you have it in your hands, it's going to definitely be worth it. Well, that's it from my review for this particular turbocharger. I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, as always, you can be able to email us at speedtrapconsulting at yahoo.com. Stay tuned uh, because of the fact that uh, there's going to be a launch of the new website, speedtrapconsulting.com, to be able to give you more information, including this video, uh, as well as other specifications. And if you have questions, you can be able to ask. Thank you again, take care, and as usual, happy boosting.